Well, hey, everybody, Mr. Delcor coming at you here remotely today. Uh, we're going to quickly go through our next five trees. We're on to round three, the recent clearing trees. Uh, hopefully at this point uh, today, you've already taken your Oaks and others quiz, and it's time to move on and start focusing on those next five trees. So let's jump right in. Uh, just like last time, you guys are going to follow along with me here today. You're going to take a few notes and you're going to submit the, a screenshot of your notes uh, via Google Classroom so you get your classwork credit for the day. Uh, so yeah, as I said, these are the recent clearing trees. You know I'm trying to group these trees in my mind, uh, you know, with the maples first and then our oaks and others, our big mass producers in the second round. These are the trees we tend to find after a disturbance in the forest. These are the first ones to show up. We call them pioneer species in many cases. They're often uh, a sign of a younger forest when you see lots and lots of these species. Uh, but here we go. Uh, let's, let's take a look through here. Uh, three of these species are going to be members of the birch family. They all have these, uh, the genus Betula, and the first of which is paper birch. This is a tree many people call white birch, just kind of, uh, you know, blankly across the state. They might say that's a white birch tree, and it's easy to do because it's white, but we got to be careful, and we'll see why here in just a minute. So this, uh, the paper birch, Betula papyrifera, and that, I feel like, is a pretty easy scientific name to remember, uh, you can almost hear paper in there, but let's go to our notes here and we'll make a new heading. There's our notes from last time. I'm gonna start a new page and let's see, let's go a little bit bigger here and we're gonna say uh, the recent clearing trees, right? We're in a recent clearing in the forest. These are the trees that are gonna be coming back next. This is round three. And the first tree we have here today is gonna be paper birch. Okay, and this is Betula papyrifera. Papyrifera. Awesome. So Betula papyrifera, paper birch. When I think of a paper birch leaf, I think of a leaf that's relatively heart shaped, kind of long and broad, with a kind of a wide heart shape to it. And these guys are all serrate or doubly serrate, all of our birches. So we'll add some serrations here. They're pinnately simple. So if we go down through here, we know that they're pinnately simple leaves that are kind of heart-shaped, right? I, I kind of look for this. I'll put it in here. Heart shape. That's kind of what I'm looking for with paper birch. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the bark on mature trees is white and it peels really easily. When they're younger, their bark is uh, you know brown to almost orange. And as they age, it becomes a lot lighter in color. And then you get those big uh, peels of, uh, of dead outer bark on there. So here we go. We're going to say this is an, an, an early successional tree, early successional species. And uh, bright white bark on older trees. So we definitely want to pay attention to that. We'll talk more about paper birch when I get back with you guys. We'll go look at a whole bunch of them out in the TA forest here pretty soon. And uh, we certainly have plenty of them out there because we have had disturbance in the TA forest. Sometime in the 60s or early 70s, we had a big harvest out there, and there are plenty of signs of that to this day, including a whole bunch of paper birch out there. So let's take a look at our next one here. We got paper birch. Let's look at its close cousin, and this one is the one that gets very often confused for paper birch because it can look very similar from a distance. It's kind of whitish in color. So people kind of group this, these two species into one tree, and they just call it white birch. Uh, but on, uh, in reality, the gray birch is a completely separate species, much different shaped leaf. It, you know, gr it thrives in a little different habitat, and we'll get into that here in a second. So let's think about gray birch now. Gray birch, and this is Betula populifolia. And we'll get to that, why that scientific name is there in just a minute. So gray birch is going to be much more kind of triangular in shape. Maybe not quite that harsh, maybe more like rounded, but then it's got this long kind of beautiful end on it like that. And it's going to be doubly serrate. I'm going to have a tough time drawing doubly, double serrations, but it is very serrate. It is pinnately simple, just like all the other birches. But that long pointy end and the, the, the triangle shape, um, 
This is triangular, I think that. It's, it's kind of unique in that super triangular, that gray birch, <clears throat> Vitula populifolia. The thing that may, I remember about gray birch is I, I always say this is, the, this is the official tree of sand pits. If you've ever spent any time, you know, maybe wrapping around in a sand pit on your dirt bike, a four-wheeler, or just, you know, who doesn't like hanging out in a nice sand pit, you know? But uh, if you've ever been out in a sand pit, any kind of big sandy pile that's been abandoned for a while or a gravelly area, you're going to have gray birch popping up in there. It's a, it's a classic uh, pioneer species that shows up after disturbance. It grows in these big clusters. It turns beautiful yellow in the fall, the foliage, um, and the leaves tend to tremble in the wind, which gives it uh, the scientific name populifolia. We'll talk about the next uh, here in just a minute, then another poplar tree. So gray birch... Um, we're going to look for, uh, it loves sandy or gravelly areas of recent disturbance. Lots of these along the roadsides as you drive along, you know, when they create the ditches and they scar up the ground and open it up and maybe fill with sand along the side of the road. Uh, you know, gray birch loves to grow along roadsides and we see a ton of it in recently disturbed areas. In northern Maine, where I drive around a lot, you know, just doing my thing, there is gray birch everywhere. So uh, this is uh, a, a tree you're going to see around and notice now Now that you know what it is. So gray birch, Betula populifolia. We're going to keep the notes fairly short and sweet on these. We just want to think about what they look like, what's the list of trees we need to know, uh, and we'll get her done. So let's skip down here. Our third and final species of birch tree is yellow birch, and this is Betula alleghaniensis. So this is yellow birch, Betula alleghaniensis. Say that five times fast, right? Yellow birch, Betula alleghaniensis, reminds me a lot of, uh, reminds me a lot of like beach, it's got that kind of classic ovate shape, long kind of shape just like this. And it, but the difference between beech and uh, yellow birch to me, if I'm just looking at leaves, is beech has those larger single teeth, really evenly spaced, where, bir where yellow birch has that kind of classic birch shape or birch margin of lots and lots of little tiny teeth. And I'll go back to the actual image here in a second. We'll take a look. A yellow birch. Notice how many tiny little serrate, you know, teeth there are on there compared to beech that would have, you know, single, single teeth all down the leaf. So similar shape. You got to be careful there. And yellow birch is often very yellow looking um, in its bark. Younger trees, which are the majority of the trees around the state today, are really yellow. They have this kind of papery, peely bark, a lot like a paper birch in some cases, but it's much more yellow in color, and that could be a dead giveaway. And often on quizzes or on the final tree ID exam, I'll show the bark in the picture because I want you, to, I want us to look at, you know, eventually get trained on looking at the whole tree, not just leaves. Um, so the bark is a dead giveaway on this tree, and we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, next week when I'm back with you guys. Um, and uh, so let's do this. We could say yellow... I'll show you lots of pictures I've taken of yellow birch in the woods. Yellow, uh, yellowish bark on mature trees. This this tree is everywhere in the North Main woods. It's a pretty important uh, lumber lumber tree up there. They're cutting a lot of yellow birch uh, for uh, veneer and hardwood and stuff up there. Uh, yellowish bark on mature trees. And then the kind of neat trick with this one is the buds and twigs smell of wintergreen so if you kind of scrape the bark off a fresh twig with your thumbnail there and give it a whiff it smells just like wintergreen and that could be a dead giveaway on yellow birch if you're in the woods and there's no and there's no leaves and you got a hunch give it a sniff and you'll smell that wintergreen and you'll know you found yourself a yellow birch so kind of a cool one those are our three birches we got paper birch heart-shaped leaf uh gray birch with that triangular leaf and then yellow birch with that classic yellow bark we're looking for, but also the longer, more beech-shaped leaf, but lots of tiny, uh, tiny teeth. I might put in here beech shape, beech shape. If it rem if it's reminiscent of beech, but it has lots of tiny teeth, and you're like, what is going on here? You're probably looking at a yellow birch. So we got two more to do here. We got two more to do, and these are no longer birches, but they are certainly recent clearing trees. And this one here is maybe. 
uh, one of our most beautiful uh, deciduous trees in Maine and, and across the country. This is the Quaking Aspen. And I love that name. It's very fancy sounding. And we'll talk about what your average Mainer does not call this Quaking Aspen. I had never heard of Quaking Aspen until, you know, formal, formally learning about trees. I grew up around these trees, knew what they were, but never once called them Quaking Aspen. This is, Quaking Aspen is Populus, Populus, Tremuloides. Populus tremuloides. Wow, that handwriting is just not good. T-R. Tremuloides quaking aspen. Okay? And populus tremuloides, the, the term that most Mainers are going to call this, Mainer term, is poplar. I swear, you know, the majority of people you meet around the state, if they know their trees, they're going to call a quaking aspen tree a poplar tree. You get out west, and everybody calls it quaking aspen or aspen but around here for whatever reason in the northeast it tends to get called poplar by your native woodsman um and even you'll hear you'll hear the pronunciation like with a lot of the older generation i you'll hear the term popple they'll just take the poplar out and they'll say oh a bunch of popple over there and they're talking about poplar trees quaking aspen there's another cousin of quaking aspen around the state big tooth aspen it looks identical the leaves look identical you guessed it they've just got big teeth on them so uh, it's a little more rare. Uh, quaking aspen is everywhere. Uh, and if you look at this leaf, really pretty leaf. These long petioles, they're flat. You can't tell there, but uh, if we flip the petiole around, it's very flat and it catches the wind. And these trees uh, tremble in the breeze and you'll have all the other leaves in the woods that are dead still on, a, on what seems like the, a very calm day. And you look at a quaking aspen tree and the whole thing is trembling. It can almost be like distorting to your eye. And that's hence the name quaking aspen. They're always quaking in the breeze and they're always moving around, hence tremuloides, or people also call it trem trembling aspen. You'll hear that used as well. I think the thing I always remember about that leaf is I think it looks like a guitar pick to me and it's unlike any other leaf in the main woods. It's got that uh, guitar pick shape. So, um, you know, I don't play guitar, I wish I did. I would be way cooler. You know, you gain, you gain cool points if you play guitar. But it, it is this kind of classic guitar pick shape, I guess, we could think. And uh, it's got these kind of interesting, uh, the, the, the veins in the leaf are different. They're kind of, you know, different shaped. They're not as predictable as the other ones. It is still pinnately simple. Uh, but maybe it will put in here guitar pick. This is a very popular uh, early successional tree. All those clear cuts up north are full of quaking aspen popping up everywhere. This loves to come up in fields if they don't get mowed for a few years. Uh, we call this poplar. It's got that classic uh, shape. Uh, this is such important food for ruffed grouse in northern Maine. If you like hunting partridge up north, this is the tree to go find in those old clear cuts, and you will find partridge, and you'll find snowshoe hare. Uh, deer and moose feed on it. Really, really important early successional tree in northern Maine. Um, the next time you're up there chasing partridge around, if you, if you harvest one, stop and look around. I bet within sight there will be uh, quaking aspen trees, and that is not a coincidence. So, uh, yeah, very smooth, almost white-looking bark on younger trees. Um, smooth, light-colored bark. Most of the trees you're going to come across are pretty young. These are very short-lived trees. They live fast and die young. A lot of these early successional trees are designed to do that. They love full sunlight. They show up, they grow like crazy, and then they die, right? As soon as they uh, experience any um, competition from those pines and oaks and maples that are catching up with them. So smooth, light-colored bark. Maybe we'll put it in there. Yeah? All right. We've got one more species here to round out our five early successional trees, our recent clearing trees. And this is going to be uh, black cherry whoa black cherry bam, bam. oh sorry about that sorry sorry okay so we got prunus serotina i don't know why i always remember this but i think prunus i think of prunes and that makes me think of cherries i don't know do what you need to do to remember it but that's how i remember it black cherry prunus serotina it's got very dark uh rough bark on trees as it matures um, and it's got a leaf that looks a lot like your average kind of fruit tree leaf, this longer kind of skinny, pinnate, simple leaf. Uh, and it does produce cherries. They are edible. They're more pit than they are 
cherry, if you know what I mean. They're not like a, you know, a selectively bred delicious cherry. They're wild. The birds eat them like crazy. Um, you very rarely find ripe ones on the trees because they've already been eaten by the birds. So it's not, it's not common to, to find tons of ripe ones on the trees, for me anyway, because as soon as they ripen up a little bit, the birds are eating them. Uh, so black cherry, prunus, serotina. Uh, the dead giveaway on, on this one to me that I spot them in the woods a lot late summer is this is maybe one of the favorite trees of those uh, tent caterpillars we have around the state. They make the big webs in the trees and feed on the foliage. And tent caterpillars really, really love. They love gray birch and, uh, you know, a lot of other trees, but they really love uh, black cherry and they prey on it pretty hard. So you'll, you'll often see big tent caterpillar nests in black cherry trees around the state. But this is another one that shows up after disturbance. There's a whole bunch of little ones sprouting up along the eastern trail. Not a coincidence. That's an area of recent disturbance, and that's where they're going to come up. So um, you don't find a lot of big, honking, old black cherry trees around the state um, for whatever reason. But uh, they have very fragrant wood when you do. They're pretty cool. Um, cool trees. I like finding black cherries. So dark, rough bark. Um, <clears throat> and let's draw, let's draw the leaf here. The leaf is probably something like this it's long and kind of skinny shaped and it's pinnately simple right and this is um it's a long and skinny leaf it's unlike anything else in these five so it kind of it kind of makes it easy on the kahoot and on the quiz in this batch of trees because there's nothing else like um black cherry in here so dark rough bark and let's see what else are we going to say We'll say in here that one of the things I, I swear I can spot it from a mile sometimes because of those tent caterpillars. Caterpillar favorite. So there you go, guys. We've got five species to know now than our recent clearing trees. Paper birch, gray birch, yellow birch, quaking aspen, and black cherry. Uh, I appreciate you uh, following along here today and uh, – being a, being a good kid and getting your work done while I'm away. I'm looking forward to getting back in there with you guys. And uh, we'll be off and running with our recent clearing trees when I do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Also, if you like today's video, be sure to like and subscribe. Okay? And, uh, all right, I'll see you guys next time. Over and out.